just one finding that is so dramatic. By 18 months of age, kids who grew up in poor families already have risks that we can measure at the biological, cognitive, uh, and other levels. We created clones of the program we had in, in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and we ran the same programs for the first three years of life with randomized uh, designs at uh, University of Arkansas, Albert Einstein College of Medicine, Harvard, uh, Miami, University of Pennsylvania, University of Texas, Washington, and Yale. And this little graph that you're seeing summarizes the results at age three for the children who were in the early education group versus the control group. And what you see is in eight of the eight sites and overall, the differences favored the kids who uh, were in the early education group. This is a finding that was there at age three. It was actually there beginning at age two, but it was not there at age one. At age one, the groups were comparable. So, and in that study, we had a thousand uh, uh, participants, and we were able to look at a broader spectrum of families, and this is probably the single most important graph that I can show you this evening. It marks off the performance of the children at age three as a function of the social backgrounds and educational backgrounds of the parents. And in yellow, what you see is a line so that the, by age three, the kids who come from families with only some high school education are down with IQs about 85. And kids coming from college educated families have IQs above 110. But what early education has done is to level the playing field. And it's leveled the playing field by having a disproportional positive influence on the kids who come from the most challenging families. It is closing the achievement gap before children even get to, to kindergarten.